what was this place called? Quintas, I have to throw it up. Uh, Quintas Resort and Amazingness, we're going to call it because it's actually really nice. We really went out on a limb. How much did, How much was one night here? Uh, it was uh, 1,700 pesos all in. Yeah, that's with breakfast tomorrow yeah. and with uh, um, the, the whole night taxes and all the fees that you would normally occur. All of it. Yeah, all 1,700 it. pesos. And I mean... We got a little private, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like bungalow type deal? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a bungalow with a couple of beds and a shared bathroom on property. and But it's got a nice pool. I mean, yeah, the pool ocean. is sick. Yeah. Um, check out the walkthrough on the Extras channel because, wow, this place is pretty cool. We'll show you guys around there. It is raining on my camera right now. Is it really? No. Yes. We're in Maulbao. No, oh, geez. The word I can't say. Yeah. Maulbao. 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 Yeah, I think I got it, finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're south of there um, at this pretty sick resort. And I was kind of looking forward to going there, to be honest. And then we, we went there. And I don't know. Like, you and I try to steer away from the more touristy places. Agreed? Yeah. I almost have zero interest in seeing right. like foreigners that aren't native to the country. Yeah, that I'm in. man. Like I'm just all about like vibing with the locals and, and all that stuff. So the more we get into a place and I get it, like the falls are cool. The canyoneering's cool. Uh, the snorkeling's cool, all that. But if we get to a place and there's a lot of tourists there, I'm kind of immediately turned off. Yeah. You know, it's just not where I want to be on this trip. Well, and I think... Regardless of what we get into, like, we're not going to be able to match the beauty that we've gotten into. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, like we were able to just, like, bomb around Bogo Bay on boats and stuff like that. Things like that are always going to supersede, like, a guided tour to me. It's going to be really hard for me to care about a guided tour when, like, I know if we just do what we do best and make friends and genuinely, like meet up with cool people we'll f we'll find something beautiful to do yeah it's true i mean it's, it's one of the most beautiful places on earth like yeah i mean <laughs> everywhere we've been so far whether it be you know shargao or makati or cebu or it's just it's always the best times have always been had when we just kind of integrate and meet people kind of on our own terms yeah 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 I, so like i'm sure there's plenty of reason to do touristy stuff and i i it's it's rough right because i don't want to just like dog Touristy stuff. No. Not everybody gets to just come hang out for months on end. I, I understand that that's, that's a special thing. That's if true. I was here for 10 days, you almost have to pack this, like, we're going to show you what you want to see, and we're going to get you into some situations where you're really going to enjoy yourself. You have to do that. That's true. We have the luxury of time. We can take a couple of days to work on some of these videos and then, like, really kind of plan out at least the area we want to see to get into it. Yeah, so man, that's a really good point, actually. Yeah. I hadn't thought about it from that frame of reference. But yeah. Where uh, we kind of came here initially on vacation mode. So the stuff I was thinking about was, hey, let's go to this island that is really popular. And this island, now that we're not really in vacation mode anymore, yeah. and we keep having these experiences, I keep thinking about, okay, where can we go where it's still beautiful, but it's not overly touristy, yeah. right? right? All of the moments that if somebody said, hey, how's the Philippines been? The things that pop into my head are so far from like rolling around cloud nine or doing the stuff that like everybody's going to do. And it's awesome. It's so sick. Like yeah. cloud nine is awesome. That surf There's competition There's a reason people do it. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, right. it's all super dope. Right, right. But we, again, we have the luxury of time that people don't have. That's true. And so our experience is definitely going to be different. And I think you see that with a lot of the other vloggers and stuff that stick around for a while. They get themselves into better situations because they don't have to kind of rush through a vacation. That's true. And so, like, I don't want to discount how lucky we are to be able to do that because it's huge. Yeah. And it, it kind of tracks with the people that we've met up till now where yeah. they've maybe been here before right. and said, okay, we've, we've done that bit. But when we meet locals, yeah. it becomes a completely different experience yeah. for us. And so... I feel like we're kind of learning their lessons yeah. early as, oh, as we go. Oh, we've been very lucky. Very lucky. We actually probably have some of the most fortuitous foreigner friends. We got like right on some people that were like, 
oh, I'm hanging out for two months. I'm here through the new year. Yeah. And like, this is kind of how I do Southeast Asia or this is like my experience in the past. And we went, noted. Thank you for that intro. Yeah. <laughs> Jotting that one down and it's worked out really well. So we went, oh, perfect. So we are on the right path. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And that's been huge. Yeah, it has been, man. And I, um, I kind of struggle from a logistics standpoint, as you guys may know by now, Corey does 99.9% of the filming and the editing. The and editing. <laughs> My man is still the best vlogger around. Uncontested. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm coming into my own in this whole, this is a very new space for me that I'm really enjoying it more, way more than I thought I would. Um, but as we're kind of coming into our own with this, I think, um, you know, we're learning that the best experiences that we could possibly have are, are the unplanned ones, yeah. um, candidly. And we're picking that up through um, our wonderful commenters that are saying, hey, you should really try this, which would have never even come on the radar had we not have seen that in the comment section. Or it's coming from people that have foreigners that have been here before. Or it's coming from really the locals that are saying, hey... Um, I don't know if you know this, but there's this fall or there's this experience that isn't really um, something that people consider very often or it's well off the beaten path. And, yeah. you know, once we start being open to those experiences, uh, it's just kind of been a completely different trip for us. Uh, really unexpected for me. Yeah, totally. Um, but again, when when you have the luxury of time, where you can go, okay, well then I guess we can reroute because we didn't hard plan this trip ahead of time. And then you have the patience to maybe work through what's a slow interaction at first and then becomes a great friendship, which is like a lot of a lot of the locals that we would probably call friends for the rest of our lives. It's not like we just rolled up and we're like, hey, buddy, we're friends now. Like we worked at it because we're like, this guy has some information. He was very kind to us. There's so many reasons why like a person would like have a draw like that, but we've been so lucky in yeah. that regard that we were like, I want to cultivate that more. Hey, we should go back to his shop. We should go back to this place because like it served us well already. And then, then they're like, Oh, we're friends now. Let's hang out. And you're like, wow, that was really easy to make that new friend. And yeah. now, now we have all the benefits in the world. Like who needs trip advisor? Who needs, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's very true. And so I'll just touch for a second on, so Corey and I are really good friends and we've been good friends in developing this friendship over the last two years since we met at summer camp. And we, we kind of clicked immediately, such a, such a good quality human being, which as you guys know, meeting quality human beings um, these days is, is few and far between. And so we knew that we were capable of doing this trip together. But I won't lie to you guys. It's, it's also been very challenging. Yeah. Like we've been sleeping um, in two beds, uh, you know, side by side um, for weeks on end. And yeah. we've also had to spend a little more money to get two bedroom condos. Yeah. Right. And there's just this kind of trip really tests a friendship. Yeah. yeah. You know, it does. Um, and in doing so, I look for people to maybe break the monotony is a hard way to put it, yeah. but you and I spend so much time yeah. together, but I realized that, Hey, we're in a really unique environment here where it's not going to serve either one of us yeah. for me to go out this door and be in a bad mood this morning. <laughs> like regardless of if I had my coffee or whatever, but yeah. just need to power through it and realize that, Hey, we have certain things to do today. Yeah. And, um, we have to coexist yeah. with each yeah, other, huge. right? In a, yeah. in, a, in a very small space. Yeah. And, you know, one of the big things that we touched on before we came on this trip was the need for both of us to have community. Yeah. You know, um, we both already talked about the need for operating with a high level of integrity, right? And that means that every chance we get to make a right or wrong decision, um, the one with the most integrity needs to always win out. The, the one that was a close second was community. Yeah. Like we want to build uh, a community of people that are like-minded and that we trust, that have a high level of integrity. And, you know, if we want to build that, it starts with us. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
It's not always easy. It's like, it's because it's constant, right? You're always operating on like, I can make right and wrong decisions and like, you know, you don't always succeed, you don't always succeed, but you have to go, okay, and you got to pony up and you got to do some shit and you got to make some compromises and, and it's challenging, but it's, uh, you know, I've grown more in the last, what, five weeks? Is it five weeks? It has been. <laughs> October, October 3rd, we landed in Manila. We left October 1st, we landed October 3rd. So almost six weeks. Wow. Like, yeah. Wow. But I've grown more in five five weeks than I have in probably, I mean, especially since the pandemic, like three years. Can you talk about that for a minute? Yeah, I mean, so I've, I think I've stated in other videos or something, I've only ever been to Japan and North America. And so I was coming into this trip with very little experience just being in, you know, vastly different places. I've been all over the United States and I've been doing that since I was a kid. So not, not completely, um, you know, brain dead when it came to like trying to, to figure out new places and things, but it's, you know, going literally the other side of the planet is kind of a huge deal. Um, and it's, I can't think of a single day that there wasn't something to reflect on and be like, Hey, you can grow an exorbitant amount from whatever you're feeling, from whatever happened, from a conversation we had, from a good experience we had, or a, hey, why is things off today? Kind of all of it, right? Because mm -hmm. like we're, again, day in and day out, we're trying to figure it out and do the thing. Um, and it's been, yeah, it's been crazy. I feel like I'm, I'm double the person I was before I left in Florida, right? Like, that's and that's, that's insane. Yeah. Like, and I've had, I've, you know, I'm not, short of great experiences in my life, but like not even close, no. like not even close. It's like any trip, any, <laughs> you know, landmark achievement in my life as to being here for almost six weeks and going, we're still making a run of this and we're gonna keep making a run of this and it's fine. Yeah. And everything is either as we hoped or better. And that's rare as <laughs> that a rare situation. So for me, it's, uh, you know, it's a bit of, it's a bit of mental work to, you know, I spend a lot of time on the videos and things like that, but it gives me a little bit of time to reappreciate those, those aspects of it where it's like, wow, man, like you've, you've put in your work, but you're putting in emotional labor and stuff every day to trying to just like not be who you were yesterday to sure. be better every single day. And that's been huge. Yeah. Like that's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I could have expedited that process any other way besides to go in one of the most uncomfortable situations ever, which yeah. is like the absolute unknown for me. Right. And, and for those of you just catching up, Corey didn't plan this trip. <laughs> <laughs> go back to our first video. This was thrown on me. Yeah. So yeah. we knew that we wanted to do something in the content creation space and he was moving back and forth from Michigan to Florida and making a permanent move for the first time yeah. in your life yeah. out of Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah, and I've lived everywhere, but I, I, I would say that I'm a Michigander for sure. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. And then, so he was already picking up his entire life and moving down to Florida. And I came with a brilliant idea <laughs> <laughs> to go to the Philippines. Yeah. Right. And kind of said, hey, man, surprise. Um, I propose that we go to the Philippines. And he was like, wow, I don't even know what to do with that information, but let's go. And he's always been really open to these new experiences. And I think that that has lended itself um, to, honestly, my success, which I would like to say our success. Yeah, yeah. But my success comes from our success. And it's it's when we start talking about community and moving into this, like the Filipino space, um, it starts at home. Yeah. For me. Sure. Right. So we started with going, um, okay, we know that we want to do this company, this content creation thing. We don't quite know how we want to do it. Okay. Here's how we want to do it. And then as we get here and as we get in the space and we know that we want to build community, we open ourselves up to these further transactions because the momentum that we've built on our ability to create a cohesive community yeah. has really pushed us to want more. Yeah. 
at, at least I speak for myself when yeah. I say No, that. I'd agree with that completely. Like, I, I just, sure. I, I want more. And, you know, with the integration of the people that we met in Shargao, yeah. whether it be the locals like Bro yeah. or Tom from the Wake Park right. or a, a myriad of other people that yeah. we met. All the Karsada family. Like, all yeah, the Karsada yeah, yeah, family, yeah, yeah. right. All of them. And, or whether it be Mark, or like friends yeah. that I've had in yeah. the past and Who are just friends that we ride, now yeah. have that are yeah. part of our, right. And um, like we, we continue to look to that space um, to... To kind of grow, I looked at that space to grow um, where I'm at as a person. And that was really my fundamental reason for wanting to come here. Right. Well, and I just, I don't know that there's really anything else at the end of the day. Like, we've had a lot of conversations. We won't get into any, like, the, the topics because it's it's a lot of stuff. But, like, what what do we want from this trip? What do we want? in the long term for what we do. And it always comes down to like, we can probably, if we set our minds to it, do whatever we want, but it's just, again, I, and I think I said it in another video, I think like leaving anywhere we go better than we left it, trying to build relationships with amazing people will never serve us poorly. Sure. And <laughs> I think we're, <laughs> we're a testament to that being true. Like anywhere we go, we just meet amazing people and we just make better friends. And it's like, it's not just like surface level, like homies. It's like, please come back whenever you can. We're happy to have you kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Well said. It's, it's, it's wild, man. It's, um, you know, I don't know how long we'll, we'll continue to do this over the years or whatever, but like, this has been one of the most fruitful projects I've ever been a part of in my life. Like I can't think of another one that comes to a close second. True. So, yeah, no, it's 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 true. Um, the growth for me has has been significant. Um, I've, I'm not the type of person that can be around people this much. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, insane. Totally Historically. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. So normally I'll go with my friends at night and I'll have that experience, and then I just kind of look forward to retreating back to my safe space uh, for the next day or two. Yeah. And I've never liked that about myself and here it's forcing me to be be different yeah and it's a good it's a good change that's say it's allowing you to be that's a great that's yeah. a great way to put that it's allowing me to be different because yeah. you're really yeah. open to it like yeah. you're, you're like you're happy to do it which is huge because that's how i feel that's yeah. the only reason i wanted to say like i feel like some of this has been really hard it's challenging like yeah. especially for me i'm incredibly introverted but like there's moments that have been really tough but it's always a door to allow me to move forward and grow like every single time, even like the kind of sketchy stuff that like, I was like, I don't know about this ends up being fine. Yeah. Like you just got to lean into it and you just got to make sure that like you're treating people how they need to be treated. Cause they're all people and they usually reciprocate. That's true, man. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> this isn't rocket science. You're right. You're right. <laughs> it's really not rocket science. It's so funny. I've been, uh, we were actually talking today on the trip down. It was about a three hour or so trip yeah. from the city down to where we're at now. Um, we stopped, grab bite to eat and different things. And we stumbled upon a group of guys, like, like 10 guys yeah. sitting under a tent on a road. We were in the middle of nowhere. And there are times in this country, based on other travels that I've had in Central America, South America, things like that, in Europe, where I expect in those situations for things to go south yeah. really quick. And the great thing about the Philippines is it, it never does, does it? It's pretty weird, It man. never does. It's like yeah, the most jolly dude ever rolls up and he's like, hey, man, by the way, like, <laughs> if you want to go to where you're trying to go, you actually want to, yeah. you know? And you're like, oh, oh cool, thanks, yeah. man. Thanks for the <laughs> pleasant information because yeah. we had no idea what we were doing. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, I, was, I was a Marine in the States, if, if you guys don't know. So I get on level orange and red real quick in my environment. And... um sometimes I just kind of move there for the safety of myself and for the people that I care about. And like, it's just a prudent thing to do. And it's so funny that every time I get in that space here, I'm quickly, uh, I'm, 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 I'm how, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm like, not escalate. I'm, I'm quickly de-escalated by the, just the hospitality and the friendliness. Cause it's surprising. Um, it really Genuinely. is. It's yeah, just, yeah. Like the world just doesn't operate the same yeah. way. Like somebody will flag you down in your car and be like, Hey, 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 
which like even in the United States, I would go, okay, what's gonna, what's this guy got for me? Hundred percent. And then it's usually like, hey, yeah, right. right. Where are you trying to go? Hey, what are you, doing? <laughs> and you're like, you want some breakfast? You want to go? What do you want? And it's just, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like, it's pretty jarring, honestly. It's wild. You're like, oh, what's up, man? <laughs> It's so funny. It's cool. But, yeah. um, man, um, truly enjoying this trip. And I, I feel like, so normally these, uh, these little um, summarizations, I think you want to call them, are about our experiences over the last yeah. week. And um, I, I feel like Corey and I, as much as we appreciate the the nice comments and as much as we appreciate um you guys enjoying the content that we're putting out um cory as a filmmaker and i think ultimately you want to be something of a documentarian yeah eventually obviously with the stuff that <laughs> that you're putting out it looks very right. much and even a lot of our comments on the last video the band yeah. Tate got video up in bogo bay yeah um where hey it looks like a mini documentary and, uh, and things like that um I think that's kind of the direction that we're yeah, moving. Yeah, not necessarily toward. the direction, but like I want to tell the stories, and I think it's I think it's important to not just like uh, I appreciate how much you guys are interested in like our experience and stuff, and that's awesome. But I also want to tell the stories of these awesome people because they're it's so it's so important to me. Like I can just show you that I'm having a great time, but I I don't care about me having a great time. Like I want to show you why this is so special mm -hmm. and like why it's. It's extraordinary. Like it's not, I, I, there's not language for me to describe like truly how extraordinary everything has been. No. Cause you just, I'm not used to it. It's just not something we get day to day. Get it. Yeah. People are generous all over the world. That'll always happen. But it's like, every time we meet cool people, they're just like, we're going to show you what we're all about. And it's, I want to keep experiencing that. If it's there, if it's a well that we can keep drinking from and you know, respectfully, if like people are still willing to, hang around and watch it i want to do it it's yeah. it's incredible i'm gonna put you on the spot for a second sure if it's all right um what is probably the biggest difference that you've seen on a day-to-day -day basis between being in the state specifically michigan where you were born sure. and raised yeah, yeah. and to being here in the filipino communities there's something that kind of really stands out as being a differentiator yeah. between the two, right, wrong, or indifferent. So that's actually really interesting because if you're not familiar with the state of Michigan, uh, we get called like little Canada a lot and things like that because we're, we're a pretty nice state. Yeah. Um, and I travel a lot. I spend a lot of time in New York City. I spend a lot of time in other big cities like Boston and stuff, which if you're familiar with any of that, like it's pretty high pace, not as friendly area. But if you're familiar with Canadians, their stereotype is that they're incredibly friendly. And, you know, Midwesterners get flack in those big cities because we'll, we smile at people on the streets and that's just how we are. So I'm coming from a very friendly state. And I'd still say, like, more often than not, the general pace of how people are living their lives there is such that they just feel like they don't have time for you. Hmm. And even when they're being gracious, it's like... Yeah, let me help you out real quick. And then I got stuff to do. And it, that's the, I think that's like the number, if I, if I could take one, that's it. Because I think that's kind of universal in the States. Mm. We're just so independently focused and driven. And we always have several things that we have to be doing in a day. And like we, it's like, it's like grind mode all the time there, in my opinion. And it's not to say that people aren't willing to help and be friendly, but it's like, awesome now can i get back to what i'm doing kind of if that makes sense it does. and again not always but like more often than not whereas like i've only been met with i have something to do but i'm going to take care of you first here kind of mm. and it's just like if that's the general cultural like hospitality like the mentality between people is like this person clearly needs help i'm going to take care of that because why wouldn't i yeah. like there's no reason i shouldn't just help this person right now i'm capable and it's, again, it's always when somebody has the capacity and the resources to help you. It's not like people are, like, going well beyond their way. You know what I mean? They're, it's just it's a genuine, good human interaction that we're experiencing that should probably happen everywhere. And that's, I think, why it's so crazy. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Like, 
I actually do. Yeah. I, I really agree with that. I mean, my answer is the beer here is so much better. And I just want a Red Horse sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> that was an incredible segue. <laughs> I'm totally joking. I'm not. But, <laughs> it, which, I mean, goes piggybacks exactly on what you said. Um, for me, it kind of boils down to respect. Yeah. And at a risk of offending Americans, which is not the intent, right? I mean, I served my country, lived in America my whole life. I love the United States. But there's things that, like any human being, any state, any country, um, that we can be better. I mean, there's always a way to be better. And I think one of the things the Filipinos do really well is they're very respectful to everyone. You'll rarely come across someone that won't call you, hi, sir, Corey, yeah, right. <laughs> or hi, sir, Cruz, yeah. or um, it's always with a sir, almost the overuse of it. Um, but it's just so friendly and so respectful. And I think one of the things that I've been guilty of in the past is I'm so interested in telling people how qualified I am to be in the same space with them in the States. So for example, I used to work in a very corporate job. It was very important for me to have them know that I was qualified to be in the same room with them. Whether it was from the trips that I had, the experiences I had, the business that I sold, the car I drove, or the boat that I had. It was very important for me that they know that. Here, it's very important for them to show respect. And by showing respect, they get respect. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's how it should be. Like, I mean, that's the golden rule in elementary school. It's no, like, treat others how you want to be treated. And if you bake that into your society and your culture, you're just going to have returns on it. Like, period. And I just, it's... I think the reason we focus on it so much is that it's baffling to us, right? That like, it's just not more commonplace. You come from a background that has a lot of respect, like in front, you know, military families and, you know, government officials and stuff like that. And I, I even come from like a much less, like a more casual background where mm -hmm. I, I didn't necessarily like, I was never told to say sir and ma'am and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I still understood that. Yeah. Like I still, I, like I, I gathered that but it's not actually that commonplace. And I think if it were, the general, you know, I don't even know. I, I really think that people in general would probably be able to have discourse much easier. They would, you're baking in the respect you want for people. Mm -hmm. That just exists here. Even if you're like, even when we know that somebody doesn't necessarily love that we're there, or they're confused why we're there, or they're like, you're not supposed to be here because we're like trying to find something. Yeah. It's still respect first, yeah. which garnishes our respect for them, which makes the entire altercation go smoothly. That's true. And I just don't think that happens enough. It's so simple. <laughs> when you see it, when you right. can see it in front of you, it's so simple. But I think it's lost a lot. And I think that like, that's a huge part of that dynamic that we yeah. like so much. Yeah. People are just so warm and open and welcoming and they genuinely want to get to know you. Um, and I truly appreciate that. I, I grew up in a, God, hard to say a, a small farming community, but I grew up on a farm and there was orange groves and there was chickens and hog. And I just remember even as a small kid uh, that we would take care of each other first. Uh, and that led to us being taken care of. Now, that's not to say that, you know, my dad didn't take care of my mom first, and, and they did, but there was always an emphasis on looking out for each other. It was just, I knew that intrinsically as a kid. And then the older I got, and the more I moved away from that, the more it became about, okay, I'm going to look out for myself first, and then I'm going to attract the kind of people that are attracted to the person that I am. And it's been a mind shift for me. Um, 
in such a great way of kind of getting back to that community of I need to approach people here. I need to relearn how to approach people here in a different way. And, you know, I mean, you may have seen in the last video where we went to a place where everybody was having a good time and we felt like a bit of strangers. And so we just went over and bought a bottle of Tandy and some Coke and said, we're going to sit down with these people. And it changed everything. It just changed everything. And they didn't want any of the gifts that we brought. They accepted them. They didn't want them. They didn't need them. But just the fact that we were willing to um, kind of walk into their space and be willing to just have a really decent conversation with them. It meant the world to them. And in return, it meant the world to us. And we got so much from that. Yeah, man. I. It's I, definitely the largest lesson is just the reaffirmation of the fact that like do unto others is such a simple and important way to live your life that like I, I can't imagine how most problems couldn't be solved by that simple fact yeah like you just truly have to be empathetic with what you're dealing with who you're dealing with the environment you're in understanding yourself and then trying to understand the people you're you're communicating with and trying yeah. to deal with and it's like yeah it's it's insane it's totally super agree, super man. awesome totally agree we got kind of deep unexpectedly didn't we yeah it's cool because <laughs> while we, you're cutting how's your light over there probably pretty bad but <laughs> it doesn't look great